Let's see how we can scientifically, in amazing ways, separate a mixture of sodium chloride and sand particle. We have the mixtures here. Collecting the sample first, we have the iodized salt, the common salt you use for cooking. Then we have the sand soil, the sandy soil. I also collected the clay soil. This is this method is applied for separating two solid particles of similar size that cannot be separated by sieving, where one is soluble in a given solvent and the other is not. So we have these two mixtures: a mixture of sodium chloride and clay, then a mixture of sodium chloride and sandy soil. Then the apparatus needed in this separation first we have the Buchner flask or the filter flask. Then we have the separate uh, the filter funnel. Then we have the glass rod or stair rod. Then we have the crucible and the watch glass for covering the crucible if you're using a crucible without a cover. Then we have the, uh, the wash bottle for containing the distilled water. Then we have the Watman filter paper size 1. The Watman filter paper which will actually do the separation during filtration. Then we have the heating apparatus, the bosom burner, the wire gauze. Then we have the separation itself first you need to add water to the mixture of sand and sodium chloride particle this idea is based on the fact that sodium chloride is soluble in water but sand particle is not soluble in water whether it is sandy soil or clay soil so by stirring you see that that of the sand particle produce more noise because of bigger size of the sandy soil than that of a clay produce a lesser noise because you have a smaller particle size then you fold the filter paper you fold by diameter then you fold at the radius then you have formed the shape of a funnel, then you insert it into the filter funnel. You do for the two mixtures. You fold again because you have two mixtures here. The separation technique is based on the same idea. First, dissolution in water, followed by filtration, then after filtration, what follows now is evaporation to dryness. That's just the step. You dissolve the mixture in water, then subject it to filtration, after which you have the filtrate and the residue. Wash clearly if you want to collect the pure sample of the sodium chloride, if you suspect any dirt or any dirty accumulation. Then we are pouring the clay soil and that of a sodium chloride. The sodium chloride particle is so small that it can pass through the filter paper together with the water particles, but the sand particles will not pass at all. So the separation is actually done by the filter paper. As you can see, the filtrate will start dropping gradually into the Buchner flask and this filter funnel together with the filter paper will hold against the large size particle of sand. So this idea is amazingly great and it is scientific. You know, people may think it's impossible to separate a mixture of sand particle and sodium chloride. Remember that sodium chloride is originally gotten while it is mixed with soil. So this is a common idea. Then we go back to the evaporation to dryness. We have collected the filtrate and the residue. You see the residue for the sandy soil and clay soil. So the soil has been separated out. The sand particle has been removed together with the clay. Then we have the clear filtrate. This is actually sodium chloride solution. Then you subject it to evaporation. On evaporation to dryness, you will recover a very pure sodium chloride particle. But not chemically pure enough for analysis, but pure enough for human consumption. Be very careful during filtration because that is where the actual separation is done. We are going to recover this sodium chloride from each solution by evaporation to dryness. There is another method. You use crystallization, but we use evaporation to dryness for sodium chloride because it is not decomposed by strong heating or is not destroyed by strong heating. If it is a salt that have a hydrate in it like copper 2 tetrosos of a 6 you need to use crystallization and not evaporation to dryness then if you keep heating you can see there is a crystal there is a solid particle of sodium chloride collecting at the walls of the crucible if the heating proceeds the water will evaporate out in form of steam as you can see the steam is evaporating and so the water is lost we have sacrificed the solvent in order to recover the soluble solute so if this continues at a stage it will start pulping out. So what you do is to cover it with a slide or what you call watch glass to prevent the loss of the sodium chloride particles. Then make sure there is a little space where the vapor will be leaving. Then you'll be specifying a sound. After the sound, as you can see, you withdraw the bosom burner and allow to cool. Then after cooling, you gently bring it down. And when you bring 
And when you bring it down, what you do is to scrape it out from the crucible. As you can see, we have clean sodium chloride particle. So this separation is perfect. Pure enough for consumption. For further purification, you can dissolve in water and recrystallize it. And the one we have now. You see it, it is very clean. Then scrape it out gently. I tested it and it's exactly testing salty, just like the one we have there in the sachet. If you know your procedures, you washed everything clearly, you can use it for cooking again. There is nothing wrong with this separation, despite that it has mixed with sand, which has dirt. The filtration has removed every dirty particle and the evaporation to dryness has also done that. Provided your water is pure and everything you are using is pure, you can reuse it again. You see they are the same thing when you compare the two. Then you see the residue clearly. This is the sandy soil. We have recovered it back. So remember initially what we have. We have this mixture in the beginning and uh, after we have now gotten it back again you see the sodium chloride and the sand particle clearly separated that's wonderful it's a good idea do not forget to watch separating technique one where you separated mixture of kerosene and water you see comparing before and after they are exactly the same only that the, the, the soil is wet now so if you want the soil to dry you also evaporate it or you heat it in the crucible Please avoid overheating the salt because if you do, you'll be roasting the salt. See that of clay, it's very clear. Then you see where we have the mixture of kerosene and water clearly separated. Thank you for watching. I love you. I know you will be shocked, but you mean so much to me.